video lecture in association with um, the first class session that we will have today. Um, this is for Mechanical Metallurgy, MAE 4333. Um, and uh, these are my contact information that I have given here. And you can set up any time uh, to meet with me if you have any questions or meet with me or with the TA uh, for uh, any help uh, that you may require. Uh, so what is this, what is a textbook that is associated with this class is Hertzberg. Um, you may have seen that in the syllabus. Um, some of you asked if you could use the fourth edition. Fourth edition is probably not the best thing because there are a lot of uh, changes that have taken place since the fourth edition into the fifth edition, but you might be able to get either a paperback edition or uh, uh, a used textbook that will be much cheaper than what you will have to pay for if you bought a brand new textbook. Okay, so what is the whole purpose of this class? My desire is that it will help you to prepare. I mean, most of you are probably not going to be mechanical metallurgists. You are probably going to be design engineers or mechanical engineers or chemical engineers. In that completion of your job, you will require to select materials, components, understand why a part failed and so on. So the whole idea is that you will be able to connect the properties of these materials, uh, its structure, and if you did something to it, uh, either by way of heat treatment or during the service itself, it's something changes in the inside of that material, in the gut of that material, what happens effectively. So you need to be able to connect the two together. And the other thing is, you need to be able to work together in teams and you need to be able to write a proper report. When you go work in the industry, you will be asked to write a report under many circumstances. So this is going to be a practice for you. So that's the whole purpose behind this class, okay? So um, these are the lecture themes. So we will talk about stress strain relationships, deformation by slip and dislocation, which are the mechanical property, mechanical changes that are taking place in the material as a result of the service or as a result of the heat treatment or as a result of the processing that you have to do in order to get that component in, uh, in shape. So, uh, and we will talk a little bit about uh, creep, um, polymers, fracture mechanics. Fracture mechanics is going to be a major part of this class. Uh, and then we will also talk about fatigue and environmentally assisted cracking or it's called EAC. Uh, and so what is the effect of corrosion or what is the effect of the service condition on the properties, the lifetime of the component and why, I mean, from its mechanical properties, you may think that this component, X particular component, is going to last forever, last uh, infinitum. It's not going to happen. And why did that happen? You need to be able to understand that. You need to be able to um, say with some clarity as to why something like that is happening. And then understand failure analysis. So if something failed, why did that fail? and how it can be prevented or how uh, it can be accounted for in your design. For example, if you are a part manufacturer, you do not want that component to last forever. Why? Because you do not want your company to lose the business of having to uh, make that part and sell it again, right? So you need to build in lifetime of your component into that. And you need to be able to predict that with certain amount of certainty. 
So all that you will learn from this class. Uh, so even if you don't remember everything at the end uh, of um, uh, this class, I hope that you will remember something from this that will help you to do your job more effectively for your company or for your employer or for your own company if you are uh, interested in doing that. Anyway, um, I'm not going to talk everything about this class um, in this video lecture. I'm just going to give you a brief heads up about what you will find in that particular day's class. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do by this video lecture. So uh, it is not exactly the flipped uh, classroom methodology, but I want to give you a heads up about the class so that you come prepared for the class. Okay. Uh, you will also do a lab. Um, and in the lab, you will be basically be handling uh, steels and aluminum alloys. Uh, you will be learning how to do tensile and hardness testing for these materials. You will learn how to do impact and fatigue test. So it's a, a little bit more um, reaching out to understanding new information from what you did in your material science class. Okay. And the, uh, the most important thing is failure analysis. And then uh, if you were given an opportunity to set up your own experiment for your company, how do you plan and do those experiments? So, and then present the whole in, that whole information as a good report. So uh, when you write a report, the grade that you will receive is also going to be based on the quality of your report. So you will be given a rubric as to what is expected in that report. If you look at the syllabus, that sh shows you exactly what is required and how much percentage of your grade for that lab is going to be based on the individual sections of that lab report. Okay, so please look at that and uh, do this. And then um, uh, I will introduce the TA for you um, in today's class. And uh, uh, we will try to start the lab in the first week of February itself. So you will be asked to sign up for sections. And uh, we have an automated system called Sign Up Genius. We will have that. And you will be signing up for this class. Okay. So just wanted to let you know that. Um, and we will talk about uh, the Ashby um, uh, diagram and things like that. And then uh, what others are you going to be doing? So we will talk about metals. Uh, there will be a lot of pictures that you might, you might not see much text associated with that. But those are some of the pictures uh, that you will find in the textbook itself. I'm just putting it there so that, you know, in case you need it for writing your report and things like that, you can just cut and paste that into your report. So that's why, that's the whole purpose of putting those pictures in there, okay? Uh, so, and um, in the initial part of the class, we will be reviewing uh, some of the earlier portions of the ENSC 3313 material. Why? Because many of you might have just, uh, I hope, that's not the case, but in case you sleepwalk through the class, just to remind you what exactly is there in the class. Okay, so for example, we will talk about crystal structures, uh, different types of structures, and then the most important thing is understanding the phase diagrams because you will be doing a lot of heat treatment experiments, types of experiments. And we will learn about heat treatment in this class. A lot of heat treatment related information in this class. But in order to understand what is happening during the heat treatment process, you need to understand the whole purpose of 
the heat treatment, what kind of structures are available and because depending upon the phase diagram and depending upon the heat treatment, you are going to get a particular type of structure. For example, if, if it is a peritectic diagram, I mean you are heat treatment, you are doing the heat treatment in the peritectic side of the iron carbon diagram. I hope you remember what is peritectic, eutectic, eutectoid and things like that. I hope you remember that, but we will go over that in this class, okay? In today's class, we will go over that. Um, and then the lever rule is the most important aspect of understanding what is happening in a phase diagram. So how much of phase, uh, how much of each phase is going to be present in the microstructure and what is the chemical composition of that microstructure of that individual phases. So you can learn that and I, and, and I hope to remind you how to do this all over again. Okay, so that's what, and uh, you know, we will talk about uh, ternary, I mean, you are not going to be doing anything with that, but I just want to give you a flavor of what are going, going to be ternary phase diagrams. So if you think that the two phase diagrams are complicated, here is yet another level of complexity that Hopefully you won't be faced with, but at least I want to give you the flavor of that. Okay, so that and, and then we will review the iron carbon diagram um, and what kind of structures are present and things like that. Okay, so we will talk about that and then um, heat treatment is based on what is called the time temperature transformation curve. How much, uh, why? Because we will, when you do the heat treatment, you are also going to be talking about kinetics. What is the speed of formation of the individual phases? Whether you have enough time for the formation of the phases or not. Uh, so we will learn that based on the time temperature transformation curves. Okay, uh, and then uh, we will summarize that and then we will talk about uh, mechanical properties, what kind of uh, um, information is available from the mechanical properties uh, from the stress strain curves how to calculate all that because you will be learning how to do this in your lab so you, you need to be able to uh, present that information and then uh, we will talk about stress strain relationships um, most of the time we are only going to be talking about from the Hooke's law we are only going to be talking about three parameters but most of the materials have much more than three parameters. So, uh, and then we will talk about the types of stress strain curves depending upon the type of material. Um, and then um, we will list uh, some of the tensile properties for selected engineering materials. So the whole purpose of presenting this is to learn how to select the type of material and what the classification really means. And from this, you can figure out what is the, so, and if you go and look up the information related to that particular material, you understand what is the chemical composition. So, um, again, correlating properties versus composition versus material selection. So, that's um, different kinds of materials, okay? So, uh, here is a listing of all the different kinds of materials that, that we will be talking about in this class. So, uh, and then we will talk about uh, elastic response of materials okay so what is the I mean so for example if it is a plastic um, what kind of properties are present and how to select the right kind of material for the right kind of application okay so we will talk about all that in the class um, in today's class so let me stop here and um, and then we will also talk about the generalized Hooke's law, how to, uh, uh, how to look up all this information here and then calculate the different tensors for each material based on the uh, properties, based on these individual properties and where you can find all that information from. Okay, so um, I will stop here and uh, I will meet you guys in the class today. Thanks.